Well, why is society overly feminized? Well, I didn't ever say that society was overly feminized. So if we're going to discuss my views, we should use my actual word. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie and I am, you know what, I want to go back to a couple of Jordan Peterson videos as well. Um, I'm just going back to some, you know, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, I do reactions. So we're going to go into this where he is basically uh, destroying woke reporters, woke people uh, for 14 minutes straight. So sit back, uh, grab your popcorn and let's get into it. What is the purpose precisely? I am, I am quoting things that you said. Why? Because, what is it that because, you're trying because, to establish? Because you said that. I'm I trying... thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. What? How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, basically that... what you've been trying to do, I would say, for the last 15 minutes is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. So why are we doing that? What's the point here? These are things that you said. Uh, my That's job my as a journalist is to ask questions about what you represent and the ideas that you defend. Your, isn't your it? job is also to select the things that you might ask about in some manner that doesn't indicate a substantive bias. You picked three things to talk to me about in the last 20 minutes that were very carefully selected. Like, why did you pick those things? Because this is my job. Should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended because in order to be able to think you have to risk being offensive i mean look at the conversation we're having right now you know like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth why should you have the right to do that it's been rather uncomfortable well i'm i'm very glad i put you on the spot <laughs> well I'm you get my, but no, but you get my, my point speech. you get my point it's like you're you're doing what you should do which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on so and that you, is what you should do. But you're you, exercising you, your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think you, more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. So that's my idea of the patriarchy, which is a, a system of male dominance of society. Yeah, but that's not my sense of the patriarchy. So what's, what's yours? Well, in what sense is our society male dominated? Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a labor. Very, very tiny proportion of men and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like, where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny substrata of hyper successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of, the, of Western society. There's nothing about that that's vaguely appropriate. But I could say equally well that most rape victims are women. You know, terrible things happen to people of both sexes. And you could say that with, with, with perfect utility, but that doesn't provide any evidence for the existence of a male-dominated patriarchy. Well, there it are... just means that terrible things happen to both genders, which they certainly do. But there are almost no women who rape men, for example. So that is an asymmetry there in sexual violence. Well, yes, there's an, as there's an asymmetry in all sorts of places, but that doesn't mean that Western culture is a male-dominated patriarchy. The fact that there are asymmetries has nothing to do with your basic argument. I want to know. Well, let's stop for a second. This is a, she's a young people. Like, this woman looks like she's in her mid-40s. Is she supposed to, is she included herself in that guy? Sorry, I'm being petty for a second. But as you can see, all of these people try to, you know, they have these agendas when they try to ask him a question or they try, they try to get these gotchas with Jordan Peterson and no one can actually do it. It's just hilarious to watch these clowns fall over, all over themselves with their agenda. And they just don't have, even when they try to, they ask a question and then when he gives supporting evidence of what he's saying then they turn it back around and say well um uh, you know uh, women you know this happens to this and this happens to that but it has nothing to do with their questions so and then they'll say his answer doesn't give you know doesn't have a basis in 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 even though he may give the same analogy that they may give then they turn around and say well my analogy is different so it, my analogy actually proves it and yours doesn't so it's just a straw man argument most of them have and it's based it's like very emotional 
emotionally charged, identity politics charged. And we know that identity politics is just a failure across the board, that it doesn't work. People are, you know, don't want to be identified by just their gender, their race, their, you know, sexual orientation, but they continue to try to push this narrative. But yeah, um, ma'am, you're not one of the young people. And she's not even asking a question about herself, but th this is the delusion. She actually thinks she's young. I'm a psychologist and my experience has been that people can do a tremendous amount of good for themselves. Why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue based on your interpretation that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and say the things that you have to say and I regard these made-up pronouns all of them as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians do you understand that and I don't I'm not a fan of that sort of person and the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems and I know the literature inside out and backwards and I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. We had that series of statements from you. Speaking clearly is one of your 12 rules. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why it is that in a situation like that and in many other situations, what actually happens is that you sow confusion. Mm, I don't sow confusion. The journalist that interviewed me sow confusion. Well, the woman think, who wrote the New York Times article. Why do you think that happens, article, that, oh, that for you her, get misinterpreted in your views so oh, often? With her, it was absolutely clear. I spent two days with her and we spent 30 seconds talking about enforced monogamy and she's this very smart woman and she knew exactly what I meant and chose to make that the centerpiece of the article for, for I would say, to attract attention in a way that was completely inappropriate. But you know it's not just the journalist from the New York Times. You know that this happens over and over and over. That's because the journalists read each other's journalism okay, and they don't so, read the so books the fault, and the they don't watch what I'm saying. Never with you. The fault well, is... Well, no, the yeah. fault is sometimes with me. I mean, okay, it's not right. like I every I always say everything perfectly. But there's there's no... It's I mean, it's getting dull to read the journalistic accounts because they're just mirror images of everything that's been written over the last year and a half. And the same old things. There's 10 epithets that are generally thrown at me, every one that you can possibly think of. And people have gone over everything I've said to my students for the last 30 years, almost all of which is recorded, and found absolutely no evidence for any of that, even once. I would say that there is a lot online of, of journalists actually trying to interview ser use, uh, seriously, trying to get towards a, a proper understanding. And that, what you just said to me, is a, is a very common thing you say. I've been over the evidence, there is no evidence anywhere. It's it isn't easy, just me that's been over well, the evidence. It's, it's an people easy thing that have to been, say, take, yeah. been, it, been trying to take me out who've been over the evidence and have not been able to. Why do you think it is that so much of what you say is so very popular with the alt-right? It isn't. And you don't have any evidence for that at all? Uh, well, any I'm, more than the I'm, evidence that alt-right people Dane watch Stormer, this show? Dane Stormer, Neonite yeah, website, Savior of Western Civilization. On. Oh, well, there was, that was all taken apart today by a number of Jewish publications, by the way, showing that, first of all, that was all satirical commentary on the part of the alt-right, directed at taking me down, for example. And there was an alt-right article yesterday published t saying that I was a Jewish stooge and shill. So well, this is absolute nonsense, and I don't, uh, I don't appeal primarily to the alt-right. There's no evidence for that at all. It's the, it's the no, proclivity I never said, of... I never, said pro, pro, I never said primarily, yeah. um, Jordan. What I'm interested in is why you think that you get the reaction that you do from the alt-right, looking at, you know, the Kathy Newman documentary. Uh, what doc reaction? Get into interview. There's 10 there million people lot, watched that off, and commented off, on it. I'm, I'm talking about what I saw, mm. and I'm curious to know what your reaction was to the to the, to the the glee with which the alt-right seized upon uh, that. Well, well, I don't should accept we, Should we deal with the death threats? I mean, she had, yeah, I think, a dozen I don't accept the threats. concept that it was the alt-right that was doing this. There were 10 million people who commented on that video, and about 95% of them commented negatively on Kathy Newman's behavior. You think there's 10 million alt-right trolls watching that? A trans woman is a real woman. I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. Now, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? 
because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies, and they have female genitalia, and they have an XX chromosome. And I look at the studies, and I'm very much interested in studies uh, like the analysis that was done by um, the American Psychological Society, which looked at 45 analysis of se whether there's sex difference over 20 years, and its conclusion was that men and women are basically alike in terms of personality, in terms of cognitive ability, in terms of leadership, but what it did find was that media depictions of men and women as fundamentally different perpetuate misconceptions, as does workplace. Men and women actually are more the same than they are different but the issue is is that small differences at the population level can turn into very large differences at the extreme so for example men and women are broadly similar with regards to aggression although men tilt a little bit more towards aggression about so that if you picked a random person out of the population male and female and you guessed that the male was more aggressive you'd be right 60 percent of the time but if you take the one in a hundred most aggressive people they're all male and that's why the overwhelming proportion of people who in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that, just out of curiosity? I what about bricklayers? They're 99% male, and, the f and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And well, men, men work more longer hours, they work more dangerous jobs, they're more likely to move, they're more likely to work outside, they're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simple. Yeah, it's a very simplistic analysis. So guys, I just wanted to <laughs> just watch this whole thing with you guys. I'm not going to add a whole bunch of commentary because there would just be too much. And this video would be probably two hours long if I were to go into that. But I thought this was great. I have reacted to some of the full clips of this with my analysis on my channel. So make sure if you just go to my channel and search Jordan Peterson, you will see all of those. Um, but yeah, I thought it was great. I love the way he thinks and how he to back, you know, turns whatever they're trying to use against him he it just backfires in their face it's a really beautiful thing to see but leave a comment below let me know what was your favorite part of this video um with jordan <laughs> going in on these people and also make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and i will see you on the next one bye